guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is another video in the Best of 2018 series. I asked you all in my December favorites video if you would like me to continue on with the categories that I hadn't covered already, and the overwhelming majority of you said yes, please continue, because I did miss out on doing some major categories like lips and cheeks and eyes. So I thought about throwing them all together into one, but as I said in my first video, I like to break them up. I just think that they're easier to watch. Not a lot of people have time to sit down and watch a half an hour video. So I'm gonna do lips and cheeks today. And this was a very difficult one to do, to narrow down because I am pretty much an addict when it comes to lip products. I buy them more than I buy any other category, I think. I just buy a lot of lip products. So choosing the top favorites without having this video be 30 minutes just on lips wasn't that easy. So because I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long, I am going to stop talking and get right to the favorites. I'm going to start with blushes because that was sort of easy for me to choose. I knew I wanted to have less than 10. I wanted to keep it around five in each category. And I almost got down to five, but then I had to include one more. And these are the blushes that if I had to get rid of all of my others, which is a lot, probably 30, 40 more that I have in my collection, these would be the ones that if somebody took all of those others, I would probably be just fine with and totally happy. They cover all of the looks that I ever do on myself, warm, cool, smoky eye, natural eye. No matter what it is, I could get achieve the look I wanted to with these blushes. So the first one is actually a more recent discovery. This is Balm Springs from The Balm. This is a fantastic everyday matte pink blush. It's not a super bright pink. It's not a super brown pink. It would work, I think, with a variety of skin tones for a no-brainer type of blush. It's natural looking. It doesn't emphasize texture on more mature skin. I think this is a wonderful buttery formula, So, and it's very pigmented, so I'm very happy about that. And this one is in the same vein as far as a natural everyday blush that the my next favorite is, the Tom Ford, and this is in Inhibition. I believe I first put inhibition in a favorite back in September or October. So I haven't loved this one the entire year. It was maybe half the year, a little less than that. But this one is more affordable, way more, no wait. <laughs> this one is way more affordable than this one. This one is pretty pricey, but it's really good. It's a little less pink than this one. It has a little bit more brown to it. So this also could be a very good everyday blush. The next two blushes I'm gonna show you are probably going to take some people by surprise because they don't look that attractive in the pans. The first one being Taj Mahal from NARS. I'd be willing to bet a lot of you are thinking, what the heck, that is not a pretty color. But on the skin, it gives you that perfect Justin from the sun, flush. It gives you a sun-kissed look, and I discovered this over the summer when I discovered this Australian makeup artist that I follow on Instagram, whose name I will put on the screen. She was using this on a lot of models and of all different skin tones, and I just thought it looked so beautiful. It's not available everywhere NARS is sold. I think in the past, I've had to link it when I link things in the description. I've linked it to Nordstrom. And I'm sure the NARS boutiques carry it too. But I don't believe Sephora has it. I bought mine at Saks Fifth Avenue when I was in New York in July. And I've been using it a lot. A lot of times people will ask me if I, usually I try to list my makeup products in the description and on Instagram. But once in a while, if I forget, somebody will ask me, oh, I love that blush, what is that? And I would have to say eight times out of 10, it's this blush. So I highly recommend giving this a try unless you have really, really pink red skin already and you don't want any more like ruddiness because I know this doesn't sound like an, an attractive description to say it gives you a more ruddy look. It gives you like, like a pretty sunburnt look, if that makes any sense at all. And this one I also discovered later in the year. It's the Shiseido Minimalist Whipped Powder Blush and this is in the shade Kokai number no. eight. I simply couldn't do a blush favorites without including a bright pink. I think everyone should own a good bright pink blush because while the Taj Mahal makes you look like you have a pretty sunburn, 
This one makes you look like you have a pretty just in from skiing in the Swiss Alps glow. You get that really pretty youthful pop of pink and you can really control this by putting just a tad, the texture is so neat. It's just this little bouncy whip texture and you just touch it, barely touch it. So this is gonna last a long time. You just touch it and then you just blend it out and it leaves just a soft and pretty natural blushing from within sort of look. So this is definitely a must have if you don't have a bright, pink in your collection. Another cream blush, this is not a cream to powder blush, it's just a cream. This is from Laura Mercier and this is the cream cheek color in the shade Blaze. It's what I'm wearing right now. You can apply this like the Shiseido with your finger or you can apply it with a brush. I applied this today, it's what I have on right now. I applied it today with a brush. I just went in with a regular powder brush, the same powder blush brush, the same one I would use on any of these powder blushes and I just swirled it around and I applied it and it gives a really pretty natural look. So if you prefer a cream to a powder when it comes to an everyday blush, then I would highly recommend looking into the shade Blaze and there are some others that Laura makes that are just really pretty and natural looking. And then this last one is probably one of my favorite blushes of all time. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Ecstasy Swish and Pop Cheek to Cheek Swish and Pop Blush. It might look similar to some of the others that I've shown you, like just a neutral pink, but the inner ring is more peachy pink and that's what gives you a little bit more of a pop of color. And how you use these blushes is you take your brush and you swish around the outer ring and then you pop into the center and then you pop it on your cheeks and you get that pop of color on your cheeks. So it's a little bit more of a blush type of look than some of these others, but it's still very natural. And if you prefer more pinky peach versus pinky brown or just neutral pink, then you definitely have to check this one out. Just be very careful with these blushes. I ordered one from Beautylish and I was doing like a first impressions, like using new makeup and I was filming the video and I hadn't even used it before. It was gonna be my first time using it and I accidentally dropped it and it shattered into just a million pieces. Sometimes I can drop products and you know, just do a little prayer and I pick them up and they're totally fine, but these blushes are kind of like the Becca highlighters where if you drop it, chances are it's toast. The first highlighter is one that I spoke about over and over this last year and I can't believe I forgot to bring it down here. I collected everything and forgot to bring that one down here, so I'll insert a picture, is the Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is a multi-use product. When it first launched, nobody really knew what it was. Was it a foundation? Was it a primer? What is it? Well, it's kind of all of those things depending on your skin and your needs. Some people do use it all over just to give themselves a glow and to even out their skin tone. Others mix it in with foundation. Others put it underneath foundation. I have really oily skin, so I very rarely will mix it into the foundation. It's only when I, for some reason, I decide I want a very dewy look. I use it specifically as my highlighter. I like to pat it right on my cheekbones and I just realized I don't have any highlighter on right now. How I forgot to put highlighter on, I don't know because I love highlighter and I love that step. But as a more mature woman with texture on my upper cheeks as well as large pores, I don't want anything that's really gonna emphasize those pores. So I like the Hollywood Flawless Filter because I just use a little bit so the bottle will last me an eternity and I just pat it on the tops of my cheekbones and it works beautifully. Needless to say, I really love that product and I use the shade number three. My second most used highlighter of the year and the one that I'm going to put on right now is Cali Glow Highlighter from Persona Cosmetics in the shade Zuma. And because I don't have a brush down here, I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm going to put it right on top of my cheekbone. Look how pretty that is. Oh, this highlighter is so beautiful. Because I consider myself to have a neutral skin tone, I try both cool and warm highlighters, but sometimes the highlighters are too gold, sometimes they're too silvery and cool tone. This one is such a good neutral highlighter. It doesn't have too much gold, it doesn't have too much silver, it's like a beautiful true champagne. I like to put a little bit right here too. The next one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy, Amrezy, however you want to pronounce it. Now this one is definitely a little bit more gold. It shows a little bit more texture, I find, than the Persona one. This was limited edition. They brought it back around the holidays. I think it's still available, but everybody seems to love this one. I love it too, but for some reason, 
the Cali Glow, the Zuma just, I think, looks better on my skin. But I will continue to use this and love it. And I definitely highly recommend it. And then the final one that I reached for a lot this year was MAC Soft and Gentle. This has been a go-to of mine for years. So this is Cali Glow and this one is Soft and Gentle. I really love them both, but I think maybe if you have more of a cooler skin tone, not so neutral like myself, maybe you would prefer the Soft and Gentle. Okay, moving on to lips. Most of you know I'm a nude lip fanatic. So most of these are going to be in the nude, nude pink, nude peach category. But I do have some that might surprise you that I reached for a lot in the past year that were not straight up nudes like what I have on now. And what I have on now is Penelope Pink. This might be my all time favorite nude. Some of you have told me that it goes orange on you, which is strange because it doesn't go orange on me at all. Bitch Perfect does go orange on me, which is why that's not in my favorites. I do have it, but it, that one goes orange on me. So that's Penelope Pink, and then I also love Very Victoria. These are my, probably my two favorites out of the entire Charlotte Tilbury brand. This one is deeper and more mauve. Another nude that I've been keeping in my everyday makeup bag that is in my purse is this one from Hourglass. It is in the shade Believer. I like that this one is so easily applied on the go. I don't have to touch up my lip liner or anything. It's very creamy. It has a little bit of shine to it. So I like this one a lot. And then for some liquid lipsticks, this one from Pixie in the shade Matte Beige is one of my go-tos. And then also OG from Persona Cosmetics. This is another go-to nude liquid lipstick. And I very rarely wear lips, liquid lipsticks on their own. I will usually top them with a gloss and we'll get to the, my favorite glosses in a moment. So we have matte beige and OG. And then the two that I think you might find surprising, the first one is the NARS Power Matte Pigment in American Woman. I wore this in a video earlier in the year with nothing on it actually, nothing on top of it, just this. And I received so many compliments on it. You guys just loved it. Everybody was asking, what's your lip color? What's your lip color? I think that was back at the time where I wasn't so good about listing my makeup in the description, but that's one of the times that made me get better about listing the products I was wearing because I kept asking the same, answering the same question over and over. So this color is gorgeous. It's a beautiful deeper rose color that can be sheared out. You can pat it on with your finger and you'll get just a really nice natural My Lips But Better look. This is just such a nice color. I've seen it on a lot of models and celebrities when I'm scrolling through Instagram and people, artists are listing what's used. And I think that's how I discovered it. I think I saw it on Rosie Huntington Whiteley or something and I just thought it was stunning. And then I saw this one on Candace Swanpole, who's a Victoria's Secret model. She did a tutorial here on YouTube and she did her like everyday more natural makeup. And she used this shade called Do Me Baby, which is very similar to the American Woman. It's a little bit more mauve than like a true rose. And it can also be sheared down like or patted in like a stain. So this is Do Me Baby. And the velvet matte pencils are like a soft matte and the power pigments are a little bit more saturated color. And I find them to be a little bit more long wearing than the pencils. I did show some lip products in my December favorites video that, you know, if I had more time in the year would probably end up in a yearly favorites. I can't foresee them not being lipsticks that I reach for constantly. So definitely check out my December favorites for if you love lip products like I do and you wanna see what some of my current favorites are. Well, these are all current favorites too, but you know what I mean. These are loves throughout the year, whereas I only discovered those in the past month. One of them being the um, Fenty, Oh, you know what? I didn't even bring down Fussy because I put it in the December favorites, but I definitely, this is the original gloss balm from, or lip luminizer, universal lip luminizer gloss balm from Fenty. I love this one. I love the new color. I said in my December favorites video that I hope they come out with more shades. I think the formula is great. It's super shiny, not sticky. It reminds me of those rollerball glosses, the smell and the shine. 
that they had in you know the 70s and 80s so i really love the gloss bombs and then i also love this gloss from by terry these next two glosses are probably the ones that i reach for the most this is by terry gold digger and then the next one is YSL. This might have been a limited edition gloss. I'm not sure. But it's a beautiful, like, opalescent champagne. I don't even know if you can really see the swatch on my hand. You know what? I'm going to put a little bit over what I have on so you guys can see the difference that it makes. I like to put a little bit just in the center of my lip. And blend it out. And it looks so gorgeous over so many lip colors. And then another favorite gloss is from Dose of Colors. It's over the top. It's from the Desi Katie collection. They had it out in 2017 with the original Desi and Katie collection. And then it sold out. And then they brought it back with the second one they launched, I think, in August of 2018. And this also is a beautiful, well, over the top. <laughs> you put it over the top of anything and it gives your lips this sparkly golden shine. And if you know me at all, you know I love a little sparkle. And the final three glosses that I'm constantly reaching for are this one from Ulta Beauty. It's their juice infused lip oil. It's just a clear, this one is in coconut. And next is the Buxom Gloss in the shade Celeste. This is a shimmery pink. I think this one is gonna be kind of hard to see just like the YSL. It's similar to the YSL, only the YSL has more of a white base and this has more of a pink base. And the last one has been a favorite of mine for a couple of years now. It's Tight Fit from ColourPop. This color is just beautiful. It's a pinky peach, a little bit more peach than pink. I like the formula of the glossy lips a lot, ultra glossy lips. Mine has been so used that the whole logo, ColourPop name, everything has worn off, but it's a gorgeous color and I think the formulas are great. And they're so affordable. I mean, $6 for a gloss, I think that's cheaper than most drugstore brands. Again, this one is called Tight Fit. All right, we're almost to the end. Lip liners, okay. Choosing these lip liners was very similar to how I chose the blushes. If the 50 other lip liners that I own just suddenly, poof, disappeared, I would be fine with just these. This one is Stripped Down from MAC, Boldly Bare from MAC, and Iconic Nude from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm sure you've seen all of these many times, but I'll still swatch them for you. The first one is Stripped Down. The second one is Boldly Bare. Iconic Nude from Charlotte Tilbury, which is what I'm wearing now paired with the Penelope Pink from Charlotte Tilbury. And then another Charlotte Tilbury pencil that I picked up recently that I've been using a lot, which will look like this one in the near future, I'm sure. This one is called Hot Gossip. And I wear this one a lot with the very, very Victoria lipstick. Honestly, I could probably live with just these four. And the fifth and final pencil and lip product I wanna show you for 2018, best of, is this Makeup Forever Artist Pencil in the shade Wherever Walnut. So these are the five favorites. So aside from a red and maybe a bright coral lip liner for the rare occasion that I wear those types of colors, these are all the lip liners I truly need. So I don't know why I buy any more lip liners. That's gonna be one of my New Year's resolutions. No more lip liners. Unless of course it's a repurchase like MAC strip down or something. All right, there you have it. Those are my favorite lip blush and highlight products from 2018. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video as I hope you enjoy all of my videos. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and Twitter. All of those social media handles are Risa Does Makeup. And I'm gonna go start editing this and editing this and just hoping that maybe I can get it around 20 minutes or so, but I have a feeling there was a lot of products and I did a lot of talking, so we shall see. Anyway, thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you all very soon.